Hey everybody, so a quick face to face before we get into the actual tutorial. So with this video, video 42, the answer to live and everything. And I hope it, Houdini 101 has actually brought you the answer to live and well, uh, hopefully at least some answers into Houdini. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, for this, this episode is going to be the final episode in the basics part of Houdini 101. Which means after this there are going to be no more videos over here on YouTube. If you want to continue watching, there's 8 more hours of content. You can do that over on Patreon or you can buy the course on Gumroad. Link to that will be in the description and it will be permanently discounted from now on. Uh, at least on Gumroad, the Patreon thing is pretty cheap already. So that's going to just remain the same how it is. So the response to Houdini 101 has been pretty great. Uh, so thanks everybody for the nice words and it's been super cool to see everybody progress through Houdini 101. I really hope you learned a lot up until now. We went from the absolute basics and we worked our way up to, way up to create some actual pretty uh, complicated stuff. Like the squid uh, is, is like uses quite some cool uh, fundamental Houdini techniques. And I really hoped that by going through this entire process that you're sort of have started to understand the fundamentals that, that make up Houdini. Because that was what I set out with Houdini 101. Is to yeah to to really like teach you the fundamentals and because if you understand this stuff that's essentially 80 percent of the stuff that you need to know out of the way if you want to continue watching uh with the advanced section of houdini 101 that's gonna gonna uh include all of lighting and shading all of the assets that we made uh up in, uh, uh, until uh, up until now so we're gonna light and shade the squid the seaweed the rocks all of that stuff and we're gonna put it into our scene uh, we're gonna add some lights make it look cool and we're gonna render it out and then we're gonna composite the entire thing and then we're gonna end up with a super cool final shot so i am gonna make houdini 102 so it is gonna be there uh probably sometime early next year i know i teased it before that it was gonna be late this year i just didn't have the time i've been working on a lot of other things i am gonna release another free course pretty soon so stay on the lookout for that but uh houdini 102 will be sometime next year and that's gonna focus on uh, uh sub solvers and pops and we're gonna build our own particle solver we're gonna learn all of the uh like a lot of cool dynamic stuff and again in true houdini uh, 101 spirits we're gonna take it super low level so we're gonna build everything from scratch it's also why we're gonna build our own uh particle solver from scratch to kind of learn how that all works anyway that's for later uh so i really hope you enjoyed houdini 101 up until now so yeah, let's get into the tutorial. If you did like Houdini 101, if you learned a lot, make sure to leave a thumbs up. Again, I know I keep saying it, but that helps out YouTube, uh, YouTube uh, algorithm and I'm trying to grow my channel. So uh, yeah, without further ado, I guess let's head into the actual tutorial and hopefully I'll see you in the advanced section of Houdini 101. Link to that is in the description. And if not, hopefully I'll see you in another video. Thanks guys, peace. So if we go into our redshift drop over here, if we go to output, common, you can see it's set to go to dollar hip render and then whatever. So we could call this sphere render and we generally want to use EXR. So if you're not familiar with 3D in general, uh, you probably know image formats. Uh, so I mean, there's JPEG and there's, there's PNG and stuff like that. But generally, EXR is just a best format for stuff like CG. So what, because what we do inside of um, 3D, we're ge generally working in a linear space. Do you remember the, uh, when, we're, when we're working in VOPs? We're trying to work in a zero to one space. It can also go above that, can also go below that. But that's generally linear space. So it just goes from to negative to positive. So if you have a regular, uh, so let's go in After Effects and just show this a little bit. So generally just a JPEG image, let's do a 1920 by 1080. A JPEG image would be, uh, let's put this to 8-bit. So I can show this a little bit. Let's make a white circle. Right, so this white circle, if you see here in the info panel, will be R255G255B255. That's 8-bit color, going from 0 to 255. 
Now that's completely fine in some cases, but let's say if I make a background, let's do a gradient. Let's do a gradient to like be a little bit, uh, maybe do like super, like a super dark red or something. All right, so we have a gradient. So I'm not sure that this video will probably compress, so you might get it even more, but. Anyway, so you, if you look into the info panel here, you can see there's not a smooth transition from black to red. So you can see every couple of pixels, it goes up one. Because it doesn't have enough value to do this transition properly. So that's 8-bit color. JPEG is 8-bit color. So JPEG throws away a lot of information. Now you could say, okay, CF, CF PNG can be 16-bit. So you could put this up to 16-bit. Okay, now you can see we have a much smoother gradient. But it's still in this weird workspace. If we put to 16-bit, you can see now we have 0 to 158. That's going to be a linear space. And the cool thing about this is that it can also be above a certain uh, level. So let's say if I Gaussian blur this thing. Gaussian blur this. That's okay. So now it's going to be well, a little bit over one here, and then it's going to go down. You can also put this to 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 expose over. So now, wait, this center will be super wide. So let's say if you point your camera at a super bright hotspot, like a super bright reflection, if you have it in eight bit color. So let's, uh, I'm not sure how I can show that, but if you have this in 8-bit color, and if I turn the gray, if I turn down the color, this this will this would be, so I turn to 8-bit, I'm not sure if I can show it. This would be 255. So if I then turn down the brightness, nothing will change. There won't be any gradient information here anymore because it's just 255, there's no information. Well, if we keep it linearly, like one is super wide, but we can even go above that. Like now this is 16. If I just keep turning this down, you see the gradient starts to appear. So anyway, so what we generally want to do, so when we render, we want to render in EXR and we want to render at float. So that's the zero, zero, one, uh, zero to one values, uh, which can go above that as well. You also have, um, I'm not sure. Oh, you can on mantra. You can also put it to integer, but in Redshift you cannot. You can also do 32-bit float, uh, which is a lot heavier. Generally, don't use that. Maybe you do for like motion vectors and stuff. We'll go back into, into that more. But in general, use EXR if you're going to be compositing your renders. Uh, and again, we're going to do the final comp in in Fusion, not in After Effects, but. Just wanted to show this in After Effects, which is easier to show. So anyway, we can put the render to Sphere Render XR, and it's going to include the uh, the multipass as well. And again, you could use all of this stuff like $F4, like all the stuff that we discussed before. So we can just say render to disk, and now it would render this to disk. So yeah, then we have our render, and then we could load that in into our rendering pack, into our compositing package. So if I were to go into After Effects now and just type Control I, and then I could click Sphere Render, and now I have my beautiful render here. So you also saw the background in it. You could you can disable that on the light dome here. So disable the background. Just render to disk. So now it will have alpha. All right, so that's that's the basics. Um, just very quickly, because of this, these will be this is all the stuff that we'll be discussing for now. And then we'll like right now. I think it's best to, if we just move into well, doing actual um, rendering on like actual shading on our objects. So it will start making more sense. Again, you also have Mantra inside of Houdini. So if I, I could make a, ma a Mantra rob here, 
And then there's, for example, a whole bunch of mantra uh, materials here. So I could say that maybe I want to do uh, like, like iron or something. And it would make a a material here. Did it, where did it put? Yeah. So just a mantra principled material. So let's say I could put the mantra material on our thing here. And then you could go to, and the lights, by the way, won't work with, uh, which if lights won't work, I think, with mantra. But you could go make a mantra render view, go on the plus icon, new pane, go to mantra rendering, render view, just plus render. to add some lights probably so just add some uh add a light like that and let's say that we want the mantra to use cam 2 press render oh i don't i want to put it to the mantra rod sorry So again, I mean, I could have done the scene in Mantra, but again, like Mantra is quite slow. Uh, and I generally just use Redshift in production. So that's why this course just, just uses Redshift. But again, like all of the same principles apply to any render engine. And Mantra is in general super powerful. It's just powerfully, like super slow as well. Right, so now I you can see you have a set of mantra. So I could also make like a uh, like a mantra slide, and I could say that I want to uh, uh, where was the texture again? Sky environment map. Go go over there. In you can sort of press like where do you want to do the thing we want to we could go in here and then go in and the render is probably divided and like these are the, the mantra going here so engine so it's tend to fall Again, you also have these pixel samples here. You have diffuse quality, reflection quality. So it's it like a lot of these settings are somewhat similar to uh, you would read in Redshift, but it's a different render engine. It's super powerful, but just very slow. So we could could like if I make a yeah, let's make a grid. So just do some basic stuff. Maybe so. Uh, just show it. Let's we'll say there's self principle could apply that to. So yeah, we have this uh, this mantra thing going on. So again, it's just. I mean, you could also do a lot of this stuff in mantra, but we'll be using uh, using Redshift. So yeah, without further ado, I guess let's let's uh, continue. So just quickly before we start shading some assets, um, like actual assets in Redshift, uh, I'm going to very briefly go over Aces. Um, so Aces is a way of managing colors inside of rendering because the underwater scene was rendered in Aces. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's uh, briefly discuss Aces.